You know, with that Eldritch Volcanic deck topping that regional from just this past weekend at the time of making this video, it got me to thinking that, you know, there's a lot of archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh that need a lot of support, even decks in general that just need more support. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Destroy the ever-living crap! out of that subscribe button so we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Be sure that you're watching the video all the way to the end because you may find your favorite deck or archetype on here. And if you subscribe to the channel, be sure to let me know in a comment that you subscribe and let me know if you want to see more videos like this as well as hitting the like button and hit the bell, all that good stuff. So let's talk about the top five decks that I feel need more support. These five decks are in no particular order. And yeah, you know, and they're going to probably be decks that are like really off the radar that are probably just booty booty butt cheeks right now. So at number five, I have Guardians. Now, if you've not seen the Waking the Dragons arc of Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly, it's debatably the best arc in the entire series of the original Yu-Gi-Oh anime. A lot of like subliminal messages behind it, like bigger like storytelling messages just it, it's a fantastic story it's it's about like just conquering your dark side it's it's fantastic um we still do not have all of Raphael's cards that he used in both duels with Yami Yugi in the real life game you know not even including the guardian cards that he used now if we had all of the guardian cards would they be a good deck fuck no no like <laughs> they are absolutely terrible even if we had a card like backup guardian or uh what was it priest of the cemetery i forget what the card was but basically the opponent took 100 points of damage for every monster in their graveyard as long as your graveyard didn't have any monsters or didn't have any cards or something like that um that card wouldn't really help guardians other than just you know making support that keeps them on the board but backup guardian specifically its effect allowed the controller to switch equip cards basically i was about to say equip spells but really any equipped card that's equipped to do a monster can be changed to a different monster so even if we got that card though like what are you going to do you're going to summon out backup guardian and it's got a fat 2200 defense ass so obviously you're not going to set it 2022 Yu Gi Oh. activate like gravity axe growl equip it to the backup guardian and then if you happen to have guardian growl in hand special summon it then use backup guardian to give it to growl and then gains 500 attack and he can like do piercing or something like he's 3000 but like that's really it the ace monster really in the guardian archetype is guardian iados because if you didn't know like years ago like over a decade ago at this point there used to be a guardian iados stun deck this was really big when guardian iados first came out because it's a 2500 attack beat stick i think it actually has the same stats as dark magician funny enough um but if you had no monsters in your graveyard you could just special summon the thing out and it gained like 500 attack by banishing three monsters from the grave or something for each monster banish it gained 500 it was irrelevant it was a 2500 beat stick and macro and d fisher were both at three so you could just activate d fisher or activate macro on the next turn set your stun base back row summon out iados and sit on it and really that's the biggest thing that guardians have going for them because the equip spells unless they get like noble knight or infer noble knight level support the equip thing isn't really going to work out even if the one that uh is banned i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head even if that was at three it wouldn't help guardians at all and so obviously they're from a very different time in Yu-Gi-Oh. they would need a whole lot of support like if they want to go down the dread scythe route they're gonna have to make dread scythe otk more consistent because that's just a table 500 deck right now um they would need to give them all their support and then some like they showed very little support for the guardians in the anime so I really think that they should expand on that because I feel like people that are fans of like Raphael and stuff from the anime, that could help sell like a side set or something. It's definitely worth looking into. Now, at number four, I have Evil Sores. Now, I know what you're thinking. Avery, Evil Sores have Dolko, which is a monster negate, and they have Lagia, which is literally a fucking solemn judgment. Like it negates summons, it negates spells and traps. Like it's it's essentially an, an Omni negate, really more like a solemn judgment. Why do they need more support? Because their main deck monsters are liquid ass. <laughs> and that's what really sucked about Evil Swords is like when they first came out, people were kind of playing them as like a rogue deck because the concept behind them is literally fucking Digimon. And like, if you're a fan of Digimon, obviously you're going to love this archetype. I didn't really grow up with Digimon. I didn't really care about Digimon, but I know a lot of people and my friends like Digimon. They need to give Evil Swords more support. I know like some people are going to probably say, Avery, you can play like an evil sword engine and like a dinosaur deck with ultimate conductor, but it's like, 
that's not a straight evil sword deck. It's not like it was back in the day where you were playing straight evil swords with like three Dolka, three Lagia, and just killing the opponent. Like I, I won so many matches at locals because people didn't know what my shit did. You know, if you walk on into 2022 regional with evil swords, if they had new support, people aren't going to know what your shit does, especially too, since they're from the five D's era. So a lot of their shit isn't like hard once per turns. So I really feel like evil swords would benefit from like a link monster, maybe some more spell and trap support to, you know, help facilitate plays and things. Cause literally like you have the small evil swords that digivolve into their bigger forms. Like it's, it's really, really cool. Um, there were some Jirak tuners that you could play in the deck way back in the day because the Jiraks and the Evil Swords were kind of able to gel well together. Um, but they just, there's some, they're from such a different time. They need more support. So at number three, I also have Karibo, believe it or not. Now, I know what you're thinking. Avery Curry Babylon just got released five star Twilight, the other four Karibo brothers, but Curry Babylon is really not a boss monster. And you can't even use the Karibo monsters in like a sub engine deck to at least like make the deck as a whole better. You know, yeah, you can use things like, what is it? The 5,000 attack, like rocket express thing and like do cheesy things like that. But like, that's not fucking good. Like I'm not saying all these decks have to be tier one or tier zero. They don't even have to be tier two. Like if they could at least be like rogue picks, that would be really cool. You know, look at Crystal Beasts and all the new support that they're getting. It makes them do, especially the combo version, like two-card combos. Like, who would have thought that Crystal Beasts would be doing two-card combos in 2022? Imagine if you could get Karibo to that level with, like, Link Monsters. I know Link Karibo and Link Karibo do not count. Those are just generically good Link Monsters. But, like, imagine if there was some sort of two-card combo where you could get to the original Karibo and Multiply consistently, summon Karibo, activate Multiply, get your five Karibo tokens and start making link plays. Keep in mind that Multiply is also a quick play spell so you could use it to like tribute a Karibo and get five tokens for defense. That's never gonna fucking come up in 2022, but it's still something to keep in mind that they could utilize in new support. You know, imagine if we got like a 3000 attack Karibo boss monster. Like I just think it'd be really cool or even if they just made the support be like a sub engine for decks. Like look at how many good shit dot decks we have now, uh, AKA based, which is the most dumbass fucking name I've ever heard ever. That's why we call it badass sexy engine. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'd be really cool to, to see Karibo get some new line of support. I mean, I, I think it's a great idea. It's a fan favorite thing that people would love. Next up here, I have what inspired this whole video, Volcanics. Now, years ago, Volcanics, when they originally got Blaze Accelerator Reload, were a really, really awesome rogue strategy because you could just abuse Volcanic Shell and Volcanic Scattershot like you do much more consistently today, especially in that Eldritch build, which I have yet to test, but looks really fun. You know, they're from the, the GX era, so they're all like soft once per turns. And you cannot tell me that things that are soft once per turns aren't good. On top of that, the fact that fucking Scattershot does 1,500 points of burn damage if you dump all three and is a nuke for the opponent's board. It pops all of their monsters. You can't tell me that that's not good. You also have Volcanic Shell, which is, of course, as I said, a soft once per turn per copy. Uh, you pay 500 to get another one to your hand. So that facilitates Blaze Accelerator Reload plays where you can just pay 500, get a shell, ditch the shell, draw a card, use the second shell to pay 500 to get you the third shell for reload plays on the next turn. And then, of course, you also have Scatter Shot, which is just Honestly, that's the boss monster for the deck now. You know, just being able to dump a copy, deal 500 damage to the opponent, dump two more, deal another 1,000, 1,500 in total, which is more than a long one. So if you're going in a time, then you beat the opponent by 300 points and it nukes all their monsters. So you hit them with a Dark Ruler, you go into scatter shot, you blow up their monsters, you set up your own board. It's really cool. And keep in mind, you can do that multiple turns because scatter shot is a soft once per turn. Should be a soft once per turn, if I remember correctly. And it's unfortunate with Volcanics because... Like back when they were topping regionals from time to time, there was one build out of the sea of all of them that I saw that was playing, I think like one copy of Triblaze Accelerator Cannon or whatever it's called, and one copy of Volcanic Doomfire. The problem is that Doomfire is just not good. Like it cheesed one regional on top, all the other builds didn't play Doomfire just because Doomfire has 3000 attack, but you have to tribute a specific spell card that's not really all that easy to get to, to have a 3000 beat stick that really doesn't do anything else. You know, I would argue that Slicer is better just on paper because you can summon it and just deal burn damage and just not have it attack. 
Like, that just seems better. Volcanic Queen was a kaiju before kaijus were ever a thing, and Volcanic Queen's not that good. At least not really anymore. Like, it was used in Chamber back in the day. At least my dad used it. You know, it was a kaiju spot removal type of card. So, to see Volcanics get some more support, get a Link Monster, get more Spell and Trap support that count as like tribe Blaze accelerator or be able to easily search out doomfire if they want doomfire to be the boss monster i think it'd be really cool to see more support for volcanics i know a lot of people would like to see that finally at our number one is egyptian god card support once again this was inspired by the fact that we got brand new egyptian god card support in the 2022 megatons and you know it's really weird, right? Because for one thing, for years now, we've had the creator God of Light Heracity be exclusive only to the OCG. And for those of you who don't know what it does, it's a divine attribute creator God type monster, has unknown attack and defense, and you can only special summon it. You can't normal summon or set it, but you special summon it by tributing all three of the original uh, monsters on the field whose original names are the Egyptian gods. So you have to tribute the actual Egyptian gods. Summon can't be negated. Cards and effects can't be activated when it's summoned. And when you summon it, you win the duel. So I think that that would be really cool to have in the game. I've been wanting that for years now. Um, and, you know, as cool as it would be to have the three Egyptian god cards in one deck, being able to abuse them, I feel like that's going to be really impossible at the way that Konami is handling the god cards because they're just giving them all support cards that specifically help them. So I guess that they're basically just saying, look, if people want to play these cards, then, you know, they take the support cards for the specific god card and build a deck around that. And then obviously they get some generic support for all three, like Soul Crossing, which is fucking bananas. Um, Soul Energy Max, you could argue could be used with something besides Obelisk, but it's easier to just use it with Obelisk because you already have to have an Obelisk on board anyway. Um, so, you know, they've given a lot of support to Raw to help it get its original effects from the anime back. Uh, but then you have something like the Revive Sky God that works amazing with Slifer, and it lets you draw six. Like, they put the original card of Sanctity effect into the Revive Sky God, and they are the only type of cards in the game where you can't respond to them. So imagine if you had a whole deck, a whole archetype revolving around the Egyptian God cards, and you just can't respond to any of their cards. That would be busted, obviously, but if they were able to do it in such a way to where it wasn't like just tier zero buster to be able to be thrown into, you know, other archetypes and things, I think that that would be really cool. I, I love the God card. Slifer is my favorite, and I just, I would love to see more support for them. Maybe they could do like a cool, like divine attribute link monster for the God cards without it being super broken. I would like to see like a spell card that cheeses out all three God cards. But then, of course, they'd have to probably put some stipulations into it, like summon three divine attribute monsters with different names uh, from, like, hand deck or grave. But then when you activate this card, you can't activate any other cards or effects except for divine attribute monsters for the rest of the turn. You know, they would probably have to do something like that because, you know, imagine if they gave us Heracity. Well, then it's just a two-card combo. You activate the spell, summon out all three gods, tribute all three for Heracity. You know, it, they would obviously have to avoid something cheesy like that or making it so good where it can be a sub-engine in other decks like Tier Elements or something. So, guys, please let me know what you think about this top five. Let me know if you want to see more like this. These were five that I just thought about today. I'm like, you know, it'd be really cool to see these cards get some support. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.